I'm so happy to bring to you Donna Gray. Donna Gray is a library coordinator with the New York Board of Education, uh, New York City uh, Board of Education uh, Library Systems. And of course, she's going to talk about library and sustainability. I'm really interested in hearing this presentation yeah. and also to give me that necklace when you're done okay <laughs> take it away you can have it um so thank you guys for being here um thank you Casey so much um one thing I want to say before I start my presentation and hopefully I do it right um because I am the worst at sharing my screen um that Casey has put this on for quite some time and it's four days of intense learning and I don't think many of us would be where we are without it. So thank you, Casey, so much. I know she shared um, the link to buy her coffee. Make her seriously caffeinated. Buy her as many coffees as you can. Um, second is I am not a fan of presentations. I don't like the sound of my voice. I think it's always going to be horrible. It's never horrible. Um, so if you're in the audience thinking, I could never do this. Everyone is better than me. You're not. I'm not better than you. Um, we're all the same. Be here next year. Think about what you want to present. Think about how you can share. You, we're all doing great things in our spaces. We just need to highlight that and spotlight that. So hopefully people who are in the audience can be on this side and present next year because we want to hear from you. Um, so let's have some fun. And let's see if I can share. Um, which is the right screen? This one. I'm going to share with sound. Then I'm going to say share. And I'm assuming that we can all see this. Oh, no. Yes, we can see it. Okay. So now the next thing is to do. Okay. So um, let's get started. This is the agenda that I have set up for you guys. This is what we're gonna be talking about um, throughout this 27 minutes or so. And this is a little bit about me, Casey already said, I work for New York City School Library System in the DOE. Um, and I think that all students should see themselves in their learning and their learning environments. And hopefully um, with this work, we can help them see themselves in sustainability. Um, so I'm really excited about this work and I'm excited about what it could mean for your libraries. And I hope that this discussion will help benefit um, you all and give you some tips on implementing programs for um, your school library and how you can make it more sustainable. And when I say sustainable, I don't, don't just mean going green and being more like, I don't mean having recycling programs and things like that. I mean, making it sustainable, equitable and economically viable. Um, so sustainable programs focus on environmental and social responsibility priorities. Um, it's important to include in your overall programming. I think it brings awareness to the issues that affect our communities at large. And there might be pushback when you introduce these um, programs, but with most things um, and most change, there is usually resistance. And I think measured and constant implementation will help lead your community to see the benefit of this programming. It's also important, I think, to realize a lot of us are in our libraries by ourselves. Um, the hope is that we walk out of our libraries and we're not carried out. Um, and by, by that, I mean, you, your library is not wholly who you are. And we need to realize that and realize that there are people who are going to come after us and we want to leave a library that is sustainable, that someone else can pick up the torch where we left it and continue that library program and that library mission. Um, so sustainable programs also promote environmental justice, social justice, and raise awareness. And this work helps broaden the understanding and actions of the communities and the libraries served. And hopefully that goes beyond the library. I think um, a lot of the work that we do, sometimes you might get short-sighted and think like this has to happen in this semester, in this quarter. But the work that we're doing is we're actually planting seeds in our students and in our communities. And those seeds hopefully will grow when our students become um, 
positive citizens and knowledgeable citizens in our communities. So we hear the word sustainability and sometimes we think climate change and the environment. And what I wanna highlight is that sustainability goes beyond being green. It's about building programs and collections that will endure, um, that are financially sound, um, diverse and equitable. And I think a major part of, of sustainability for me is the financially sound part. And that also goes, and this might be off topic a bit, but that also goes with collection development, right? You wanna think about how you're making your library sustainable and how it's going to continue on into the future. So, um, and then my hope is that um, we can broaden the definition of sustainability outside of just climate change in the environment and make it more inclusive and approachable. So a lot of my information came from Sustainable Libraries Initiative. Um, they do a lot of work around sustainable libraries. They actually have a program where you can get certified. I know there are people who spoke yesterday about micro-credentialing. There are places, this Sustainable Libraries Initiative, you can go and get credentials to be a sustainable librarian. Um, and their work is aligned with something called the triple bottom line. And it's a concept from the UN, which encourages us to consider and account for social justice, a healthy environment and economic viability in our work. It's also helpful to keep in mind that the triple bottom line, um, keep this in mind when you're considering your programming and sustainability of your library. And these are the goals from the UN. And I, I like to couch a lot of library work in other people's work. So let's say if I'm trying to get a budget approved, then I wanna bring in um, state law. I wanna bring in quotes from other places. If I'm doing sustainability, I don't wanna say, well, this just, just sounds good to me. I wanna bring in the UN and say, it's this is not just me saying we should be doing this. This is the UN and these are the UN's goals. So here is a video um, that's gonna give a short overview and consider which goals you see in the video. It's a short one minute video um, that might be most relevant to your programming. Hopefully you can hear this. We can hear it. So looking at the, the, we call them SDGs, uh, looking at the SDGs set forth by the UN, um, an important takeaway for me is that these goals are aspirational. There is no way that you can address every single goal in a year. Um, you can't really fully address one goal um, and solve it in a year. And that's not the point of the SDGs. The point of the SDGs is to figure out how we can be um, allies, how we can be helpmates, how we can address the problem. Um, so take some time just to think about um, what goals you could focus on in the next two years and how you think you can make an impact. So many of our library programs rely on purchasing prizes or new materials in their programs. And there's nothing wrong with that, but there are alternatives. Um, we can use sustainable materials and create programs around people 
and not around prizes or products. And I think that's really important, especially for our younger guys. Um, and I'm going to repeat that to create programs around people and not prizes or products, um, because we want to get our students focused on positive aspects and not just doing things or not just reading for a prize, but reading because they feel good about reading. They feel good about themselves after finishing a book um, or doing a program. So our holiday crafts and seasonal engagement programs can be fun, um, but you also have to consider the impact that they have on our environment um, and also on our pockets. So I remember um, a few years back for summer library programming, the theme was the ocean. And there were some really cool and interesting displays for the ocean. Um, but these displays, they were not sustainable and they would be discarded as soon as the holiday um, or season was over. So the idea is, so what do we do now? So now that you know this information, what do you do with it? And I think talking about activities and programs that are sustainable, equitable, and fun will help keep plastics and garbage out of landfills and also give our students voice and agency. So here are some books that I selected and this will be in the PowerPoint that I share with you all. So um, you will be able to have access to these books um, or to the title at least. So here are some books that might be of interest for winter programming. Um, programs during the winter month include crafting, gardening, upcycling. Think about the programs you already put on and consider how you can use the UN's triple bottom line to incorporate sustainability in your practice. Um, I've highlighted two at the bottom that I would feel comfortable doing. Um, and we can dive into more eco-friendly crafts on this page. So the way how I set it up is I put together a program and included objectives, opening and closing activities and resources. So we have a craft swap where students can donate extra materials or a completed craft, or the class might decide to host a winter craft exhibit to display their work for others to see. And this might go well um, with Casey's tree she had in her library. This might go well with people who are doing crafts or have a makerspace. So instead of buying things, students can just swap the crafts that they've already made. Um, and I think it's important to say, or for students to realize that everything does not have to be bought. Um, so programs that involve community help see this. Programs that involve the community help students see the power in working together for a common goal. So I was a campus librarian and my students had service learning projects throughout the year. And I feel like this program um, would help support schools that also have service learning or community service for their students. And so for this, in this program, we have the community in mind, you have garden initiatives, you have tours, you have community cleanup projects. Um, at the bottom, you, we can ha you have engaged teens in local volunteer projects. So think about how you can include the community in your library programming. And for this community service project, students select the cause that they're passionate about. Again, um, on this page, we have objectives, opening activities. So these are things that you can take and run with. You can modify them um, to fit your school and your needs. These projects help empower students because they're in control of their learning and the path of discovery. And on the next page, I've included books that might be of interest for environmental advocacy. Um, important to know, I'm a fan of our national parks. So the Go Outside books is one that I'm really interested in. It's also really cool that all fourth graders and their families can get free access to the national parks through a program called Every Kid Outdoors. So if you are an elementary um, librarian, you can have and you can help your students get free passes to all the national parks if they're in fourth grade. Um, and you can print out the passes for your students and just give them out. And here are the programs that I was most interested in that are related to climate change. And at the bottom, I have a sustainable fashion show where students um, could feature sustainable and ethically produce clothing and accessories. So it's not just about the world's going to end. This is horrible. How do we fix it? 
having things that students are interested in, having a fashion show, but also having a sustainable, I think is a fun way for students to keep students engaged in the process. Um, here is one on environmental advocacy. And one conference I went to, um, and I'm thinking about the um, open activity of scavenger hunt. One conference I went to, they had hidden tiny mushrooms throughout the entire conference. So imagine hiding um, sustainable items, quotes or phrases throughout your library and having students find them um, and making that part of a scavenger hunt. I think that'd be really cool and really interesting. Um, here are some books and that I've selected for the artivism se section. After hearing the author and illustrator for um, Artivus at ASL, I think these types of books and programs might help attract students that originally thought that the library was not a space for them. Um, this is also a great way to help add books to your collection to your collection and improve your collection development if you so choose. Um, reviewing some of these programs, we see the library is really for everyone. And that's something that we should really be focusing on, making sure that students feel like this is a space for them. Um, this program relies on bringing more people into the space and making everyone feel welcome. So the Environmental Film Festival, where you would organize um, films featuring documentaries, focus on environmental issues, sparking discussions and awareness among teens, also, creative, white, creative writing for change. So have students express their thoughts on social justice, sustainability through poetry, stories, or spoken word. Um, not everyone is going to want to do a community garden, and that's okay. So we have to, in all ways, meet students where they are. Um, next is we have artivism and this project helps make the issues around sustainability more visual. And this could be a semester long project that culminates in the festival. Students use art and film to advocate for a better future and get to amplify voices of people who have been ignored or marginalized. Um, I really like the format and having the task on the right hand side. So students form committees, so not everyone has to do everything. So if you're really good at setup, you can do that. If you want to do the schedule, then that's something that you could work on. Um, one objective that I feel is very important is amplifying the voices of marginalized communities through art. So that's another important part of the SDGs. So I think this is something that could be fun for um, students. And also it gives them voice and choice. You're not forcing them to do something or take a role they get to pick how they want to engage in this work. And here are some books that I selected for sustainability. Um, I really like the Castaway book just because it's a book of poems um, and not a book just with data and facts. So from this list, we have a zero waste challenge. Um, that's the one that I would actually explore in depth. Um, there are several others that you could select, but when you, when I looked at it, that's the one I wanted to, to, to look at. So we have the Zero Waste Challenge, and this is going to encourage teens to take part in having zero waste. And th this is something that you might say, this would be a week-long activity, but not everyone could do this for a week. Maybe you do it for a day. Maybe you do it for a period. Start small and then branch out. Um, so you might want to start small and have students try zero waste for a day in school and then debrief on your next meetup. How is your day different? Um, one aspect that I really liked about this project was the closing activity, um, the pledge wall. It makes the work more concrete and it's a way to help students be accountable to their commitments. So we're not just going to say, oh, I'm going to try to be zero waste for the rest of my life. Like we need concrete things, concrete goals and commitments. And next we have <clears throat> books on equity and diversity. So here are some of the books that I selected. Here are three of them. And here are some activities 
that you could do. I've highlighted two, um, the Green Book Club and also anti-discrimination campaigns. And in that you collaborate with teens to create campaigns that address prejudice and stereotypes. I'm gonna focus on equity. Um, I think the Green Book Club is low hanging fruit, right? Um, so many of us have hosted book clubs in our spaces. The additional layer to a Green Book Club could be that at the end of the reading, um, participants organize a community engagement project to address the issues brought up and the books they've been reading. These clubs have the potential to empower students' engagement and foster empathy for, empathy for others. Um, I like the idea of rotating the responsibility um, for all the members. So every member gets a chance to be the leader. Every member gets a chance to select the book. Um, closing activity, encourage students to brainstorm small green projects inspired by the book. And next we have just thinking about what you've seen so far um, and the programs that I've discussed, what modifications might you make to ensure the success of the program? And I know um, we don't have time to do this right now, but just think about, okay, so Donna said I can do a film festival. Is that really accessible for my students or for me? How could I modify that? Maybe I pick the films or maybe I select 10 films and have the students pick out of those 10. So not everything is for everybody and you have to make sure it fits for you and for your students. So just think about what that would look like for you. Um, moving on in New York City, actually in New York State, we use the ESIFC, which is the Empire State Information Fluency Continuum. Say that 10 times fast. Um, so the ESIFC um, has culminating pro products. It's also available for anyone to download. So if you want to use it, whatever state you're in, it's totally open, totally free. The products are there. Um, I've stuck the three grades for this presentation, but there are more culminating projects that are centered on sustainability. Um, so the ESIFC, let's make sure I have time. Yes, the ESIFC um, really focuses on the engaged and empowered learner, um, an independent learner. So when you look a little bit closer at the IFC, you see a framework and alignments that you might find helpful when doing this work. Um, <clears throat> tips for doing this work. Sustainable programming is about asking your community and not telling them. Um, keep in mind that sustainability goes beyond just being green. It's also about social equity and financial sustainability. It's really important to measure your success. I think this goes to what to what Echo spoke about. Um, having that journal, writing things out, realizing that the data that you collect is going to help and provide feedback to the work you continue to do. Um, and also making sure that all stakeholders are involved and learning what's important to each group um, will help keep them focused and keep them informed. Um, these links are obviously will be live when I put out the, um, the link to my slide. So you'll be able to, to get these. And the links go to the IFC um, Materials for the Arts and Remus Market is really a New York City based program. Material for the Arts gives away free materials. Remus Market gives away um, free furniture. So if you're in New York City or in New York State, you can definitely access those. Um, on the right hand side, I have the programming librarian, which I think is awesome. I'm an awesome site. I also have different things that you can make, different crafts. Um, so that's open to everyone and the links will be live when you get the slides. Um, one thing I also want to, um, highlight is the is creative bug. Creative bug is a crafting platform. It's available free from the Brooklyn public library. Um, everyone that lives in New York state can get access to it, but also the Brooklyn Public Library has given access to all students, um, everyone 18 and under in 
the United States can get a library card from the Brooklyn from the Brooklyn Public Library. So all of your students can get one of these cards and then get access to Creative Bug. And they're crafting programs. So if you're not a really crafty person, but you want to do crafts, you can go there. You can play it for your students and have them do the crafts. So I know a lot of people might say, well, I want to have a crochet club, but I can't crochet. Creative Bug will have a video of the crochet and they'll do it for you. And you can have a whole program without having to know how to do the craft. So no matter what your, um, no matter where you are with making your library and programming sustainable, we have places for you to go to get more information, um, create and sustain partnerships outside of your school and explore creative ways to promote sustainability through your community. Um, this we're not going to do, but it's a bookmark craft. So when you get the slides, you'll have this. And it's just a really um, easy way to do a craft with recycled paper, recycled magazines. And we're gonna skip. <laughs> we're gonna skip this guy. And then we're gonna end with just me saying, thank you guys for being here. Um, I think making your library sustainable is super important. And it's not just about sustainable in a green way, but sustainable where your library will be there in five, 10, 20 years. Um, so that's all for me. Thank you. Okay, now you made me go into <laughs> Amazon and order some of those books. Thank you, Donna. Yay. <laughs> You're welcome. I saw a lot of, a lot, really a lot of good ones. Thank you so much for coming through today. Anytime. Thank you for having this me. was a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.